Now, this week, Zambia's dollar debt plunged after official creditors, co-led by China and France, rejected a revised bondholder restructuring proposal, stalling the revamp of $3 billion of outstanding notes. Zambia's central bank, this week as well, that was yesterday, raised its benchmark interest rate by the most in four years to tame stubborn inflation and support the currency. The Monetary Policy Committee lifted the rate to 11% from 10%. And that's the biggest increase since November 2019. We have Austin Gard, is the Sub-Saharan Africa analyst at BMI, a Fitch Solutions company, he joins us from the UK to share his insights. Uh, good afternoon, Austin. Uh, it's good to have you on the program. But what does this mean? What does this mean? Everything's happening in Zambia right now. What does this mean for the broader debt restructuring program? Thank you very much for having me. Um, so, well, like you've mentioned, this is certainly a setback and markets have reacted as such, with yields on Zambia's uh, 2027 eurobond spiking in response to the statement released by the official, uh, official creditor committee on Monday. And the Zambian quacha, its currency, has also continued its streak of losses. Um, despite this initial reaction, though, at BMI, we do hold the view that this setback will have a limited material impact on Zambia's debt restructuring program, as well as the economy more broadly. So it's critical to remember that the deal reached in June with official creditors to restructure uh, $6.3 billion uh, of Zambia's external debt was solidified with a, mem uh, with a memorandum of understanding at the IMF's annual meetings in October. So this portion of the program has all, uh, almost certainly been settled at this point. I think it's also important to consider uh, why official creditors rejected the debt treatment proposed by commercial bondholders. They rejected the deal based on this notion of comparability of treatment, or in other words, the idea that different creditor groups uh, should offer similar terms. So according to the official creditor committee, government creditors are providing a much more uh, favourable repayment schedule and are therefore assuming a lot more risk. Mm. Uh, there's a setback calling to question the efficacy of the G20 common framework, Austin. Uh, in short, yes, it does. Um, although if we look at what the G20 common framework was designed to do and what it's actually achieved to date, okay. it's quite clear that the uh, efficacy, as you put it, of the framework could have been questioned long before this most recent setback. So the G20 Common Framework was set up in 2020, and it was set up to coordinate debt restructuring between official and private creditors. And this was supposed to facilitate timely and orderly debt treatment for countries that had previously been uh, eligible for relief under the Debt Service Suspension Initiative. And thus far, only three countries, so that's uh, Zambia, Ghana and Chad, have sought support from the framework, and none of these have yet finalised a debt restructuring programme. And with regards to Zambia, it's important to note that a major obstacle has been the larger role that mainland China has played in the negotiations, with China approaching the talks in a very different way to the traditional Paris Club group of uh, lenders. And while this dynamic isn't unique to Zambia, it's worth noting that unlike in Ghana, for example, the majority of the country's bilateral debt is held by mainland China. And we think that this has very much contributed to the protracted nature of Zambia's restructuring program. And in this case, it does suggest then that the G20 Common Framework really is struggling to reconcile the competing interests of different creditors, especially considering the emphasis they place on comparability of treatment. Very interesting thing you pointed out there. But what strategies or alternatives might Zambia consider in addressing its economic challenges? Because it has to find a way to, you know, work around this problem following this setback. So yeah, as I mentioned, we, we don't actually expect this setback to have a major impact on Zambia's economy uh, per se, mm -hmm. but you are right in saying that the country is facing a number of economic challenges. So inflation is on the rise again, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and this is being driven by the continued weakening of the country's currency, the kwacha, which so far this year has actually been one of the world's worst performing currencies. And as you mentioned, we saw yesterday the Bank of Zambia hiking its policy rate by 100 basis points to uh, 11%, which suggests that uh, higher inflation is forcing policymakers to tighten policy at a faster pace. And that that's a move that we think will cap credit demand over the coming quarters. Mm. And also, as I recently highlighted in a webinar on emerging fiscal risks across uh, sub-Saharan Africa as a whole, it is likely that governments across the region will be forced to lean more heavily on domestic uh, sources of credit as they remain locked out of international credit markets. So as Zambia and other uh, African governments continue to run budget deficits in the medium term, this scenario is very likely to play out um, as the Zambian government seeks to plug the gap in its budget. 
Thank you so much, Austin Gad, analyst of Saharan Africa with BMI. Thank you for sharing your insights on Business Incorporated. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.